It's another day working here at Freeman's Garage. We're on the 56 Chevy again, and we're gonna finish what we started in the previous video with this car, our refurbishment slash restoration of the original factory 1956 parking brake system. We ripped everything out, took everything apart, did some media blasting and painting, and ended up finding out that we needed to order new rollers. These are the original rollers right here. The car has two of them. The parking brake cable rides on them. It guides the cable and provides smooth operating action of the parking brake system. This one is, well, it's busted up, twisted up, it's jammed. It hasn't completely come apart yet, but it's no good. And this one is completely missing the center. It's not supposed to be a hole like that. So this one is completely not usable and brand new reproduction restoration quality rollers are coming in the US mail. They're not the cheap plastic ones, but they might not show up by the end of this video. They might, we'll find out. Here's all the original pieces that we blasted and painted in the previous video. And in that previous video, I explained why we did not, why we blasted but didn't paint these bits of hardware and why this tape is on here. That video is linked in the description for you to enjoy after this video. So that's all good though. And this is what we need to do here right now. We need to take this apart and we need to blast on this. We need to get all this hardware blasted. We need to get these apart, get the brackets blasted. We're gonna blast this clevis, all these pieces. Oh. And I did also order reproduction rubber boots that go on here and keep crud from getting inside here. Let's get cracking on this. I thoroughly enjoy media blasting. There's no, there's no thrill like it, man. Bringing things down to bare metal. And yeah, the rollers looks like they could be here today. Might not be, we'll find out. Yeah, let's let's slow down here. Let's just let's just start with the hardware. So let's fire up the air compressor and uh, <laughs> please the neighbors and let's do it. I think we lost one bolt down in there. We're gonna have to try to fish out. I finally gave in. I've been tempted forever and ever and ever and ever to just lay parts on this magnetic tray and then just blast them while they're all laying on there. But I've been resisting and just holding everything with a pair of pliers and blasting because well, you gotta do that anyways to get every tiny little spot with some pieces, but I've been resisting doing that and then just putting up with it taking longer because I didn't want to ruin the finish on this. But this time I gave in and boy did that speed things up. Just lay everything out on here and just shh. Once everything's media blasted, we hit it with some uh, cleaner and then it gets paint. Oh, I can see it sitting right down there in the bottom. I really don't know what I would do without magnetic magnets on a stick and magnetic telescoping magnets and telescoping magnets flashlight combos. They're game changers, man. Holy cow, that's a five ace. Yeah, now that I look at it. I'm doing the roller brackets now. I don't recall if the new rollers are coming with bolts or not, but even if they do, they might not look exactly like the original. So we're just gonna blast everything here except for the broken wheel. So 
So the, the plan is to reuse the, the nut and bolt. If the new rollers don't show up today, we got something else in mind that we might be able to do on our 56 Chevy here that we can get into this video. The washer's stuck on here. Wait till you see what this what this bolt looks like. There we go. Washer's off. This bolt doesn't want to come out. Wow, look at that. Nothing left of it. The whole center is just gone. Isn't that a wild looking bolt? Okay, let's blast this bracket and its hardware. And we'll see where our tray go. And we'll see how it turns out. See how good it cleans up. There's a little bit left of some rust, light surface rust deep inside there that we could just leave and get away with, but we're not going to be lazy. We're going to throw it back in, get that little bit out. And where it looks kind of not cleaned up that well in some spots, it's just dust. It's been blasted down the bare metal, just dust and then Sometimes a little bit of the blackness is from just the media and you just spray that off before you clean it. Just media dust and the pitting makes it look kind of dirty too sometimes or wherever there might be pitting. Right here is pitting, but no pitting here. Couple things I want to point out here. One of them's, well, I'll just say they're both very interesting. The first thing is in the previous video where we started this parking brake work, that once again is linked in the video description to watch after this video, or go watch that one first and come back to this one, whichever. I mentioned that I didn't understand why in the 1956 service manual it said that you needed to take these bolts out. Oh. Let me back up. Assuming the, if the parking brake system is completely assembled on the car, the book was saying to take the bolt out on each pulley or roller, whichever you want to call it, so that you can move the pulley out of the way and then pull your parking brake cable through. I didn't understand why it was saying that because it pulled right through this one. We didn't pull it through this one. Well, this is broke. That's why it went through that one without unbolting anything. Because this, this this wouldn't come through this one. See, it all makes sense now. And I'm more confused than you, so don't worry. That's a complete intact wheel, but I think it's on its way out the door. It's about time to be put out the pasture. I think it's actually bent. But that brings us to the second thing I wanted to talk about. Parking brakes are something that I'm getting more involved with these days. I used to never really give much of a hoot about parking brakes. But now that I am, I'm trying to think back to my, well, we could, we could say 40, 1940, well, let, let's just say 
56 up through 1964 General Motors parking brake systems on passenger cars. I'm trying to recall if this is really what <laughs> this this funky bolt if that's actually supposed to be like this. Is that actually what the bolt's supposed to be like? Because this bolt is not like that. Why would it be different than that one? That wouldn't make any sense. But it has kind of a, a, a kind of a of a slight hint of what's going of these grooves. So that was the broken wheel. So I think that this is actually junk. <laughs> I think this bolt used to look like this bolt. That's kind of funny though because that stuff, the parking brake stuff doesn't move very often. There's no way that that was worn down like that. There's no way. I'd never believe it. Are these two different wheels? I think they, yeah, they're two different, two different wheels, aren't they? I'm not the kind of man to pretend to have all the answers, so I guess it's just a little surprise, a little trick to keep you tuned in. We'll see if the new rollers show up, and if they do, we'll see if any hardware comes with them, and we'll see what the hardware looks like. The nut's stuck in the socket. Let's just keep rocking in the free world, keep going here, and We'll clean up the stuff that we have, the hardware, and we'll see what the future brings. What I'm saying is, is it's not that big of a deal. It's just metal. Everything's going to be fine. Getting there, things are looking good. Now, I like these different maker's marks on some of these parts. That's really neat. That one's kind of hard to see. The bolts have L's on them. This bolt here has an E on it, and somehow we missed it. Better blast this real quick. And then, what should we move on to next? Should we do the, the forward cable? with the clevis or this big honking rear cable. Well, we got this piece too. This is gonna be really interesting. Not 100% sure yet how we're gonna tackle it. Let's do the forward cable. You know, I'm actually not sure how I want to approach blasting the cables. We are gonna take this apart, get these nuts off and get this all apart. But we're going to blast it first to get rid of all this gunk and threads to make it a million times easier to take apart. But I need you to be a Freeman's Garage subscriber and have the bell click so that the goop tube reminds you or notifies you when new videos come out. Or at least, at least just make sure you come back because either way, because I need you to remember where these nuts are on here so that when this stuff goes all back together on the car for good you can help me get it back in the right place or get it close enough to where our setup of our refurbished restored parking brake goes a lot smoother goes smooth and fast so we will clean that up not gonna be lazy but the issue here, or the thing that I'm wondering about, or thinking about is, see how this ball on this end is, it's got a shiny finish, and then it's got kind of a raw, you know, the cable is a, a raw, unpainted cable. Now, no one's ever gonna see this stuff, but it matters a little bit to me. If we media blast this ball right here, it's not gonna be shiny anymore. And what's the cable gonna look like if we blast it? Should we try doing a little blasting test on the cable? Or should we just scrub the cable up as good as we can with some degreaser and a rag 
and call it good. If we can get rid of this greasy, rusty stuff. Let's throw it in the cabinet and do a test. That's what I'm thinking. We'll do a little test of roux on it. Although, well, yeah. Test. Testing. The air compressor and the DIY exhaust system is not on right now. We're just gonna just do a quick little blast. If I can get my hand in the position, turn this light on. Let's see what happens. Whoa, 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 you've been drinking or what? I was hoping you wouldn't fall off the wagon. I think I might actually like that. What do you think about that? That looks pretty good. I'm just gonna go through with it. Cause that actually just looks like a fresh cable. I thought it would look a little different. Yeah, let's just blast the whole thing and we'll blast this ball on the end. I mean, come on. It's gonna be... It's gonna be down in here. <laughs> They'll probably get shiny too just from, from use. But although, what if I'm in Miami, Florida driving this car? I don't know what Miami has to do with it. But what if I'm driving this car and out of nowhere I just start thinking about the dull ball on the end of the parking brake cable. We're just doing it. We're just doing it. Not going to think about it anymore. It's the next day, surprise, surprise. New day, new face. You know that old saying, life got in the way? Well, it got in the way. And you know what? Isn't it actually a good thing if you actually have a life to get in the way? Right? Here's another surprise. The rollers didn't show up yesterday and they're not gonna show up today. I checked on it and they didn't get shipped out of California Immediately, they sat there for a couple days, handling time. So, they're not gonna be here, well, they're not gonna be here for <laughs> a while. But you can bet your sweet patootie that we're gonna finish blasting all the parts right now and get them painted, even though our paint booth, AKA outside, is a little wet and cold, but we got a heat gun. But don't worry, I'm gonna make up for the rollers with this. Tell you about it when we get to it. Go ahead and scold me for not running a filter in here. I know, sorry excuse for a man. It really is. Oh, well, that's part of the reason why you run a filter. Oh, you know what that is in there? I think that that's, that's what we shot back out of the brakes on the 62 Rambler Classic. So that disgusting thing, we'll have to dispose of that. And I really do need to get some filters for this. I bought this, I wanna say, almost 15 years ago from a Walmart somewhere in the United States and I probably paid 15 bucks for it. And it is a trooper. It has outlasted brand new name brand shop bags. That's right. I have intimate relationships with my tools. I smell it. It's the smell of death for an electric motor. I could delete this. Yeah, I could delete this, this video footage. But, you know, I knew better. This is sad. This thing's been with me for a very long time. Maybe I can save it, but I'm gonna have to take it apart. Should I unplug it before I start disassembling it with the screwdriver? This is reality, this is what happened. It was a choice I made. This may make me look like a goofy goober, but if it helps save just one shot back, 
I don't even know what's going to happen when this comes apart here. There is hope. You're a lot bigger than I thought you were. I hope you're paying attention to how all this is coming apart. Well, there's your problem. Boy, I sure hope you're right about how this goes back together. Okay, be prepared for this to be your fault. <coughs> Did you know that Scotty on Star Trek was a World War II hero? He fought on Juno Beach. Everything's falling apart! Well, now we don't have a shot back. And there's no reason to paint these two brackets. It's easier and less time consuming to just paint everything all at once. That really stinks. I mean, not just a burning electric motor smell, but Let's see if there's a date on here. And let's see where it was made. Stanley, one and a half peak horsepower, one gallon, wet dry vac. I destroyed it, ended its career prematurely due to, what am I, look, what, what am I trying to think of? Not negligence, misuse and abuse. Oh, well here's a date code. 4352016. That doesn't make any sense because I want to say that I bought this in 2009-ish. Because I could see 2016 may, maybe being 2016, but 435. That couldn't be the 435th day of 2016. Do not vacuum carcinogenic combustible or other hazardous materials such as asbestos. Well, What are you going to do with it? Doesn't say where it was made. Well, let's do this. We need to get this trunk open because we're moving on to what involves this. So let's put all the stuff that we still need to blast. Let's just set it all in the cabinet. So. When we get a shot back, it's all in one place and we can finish it. Remember when we replaced that pinion seal and everything went swimmingly until we went to put the nut back on and the nut would not go back on? That video is linked in the video description if you haven't seen it yet or you want to watch it again and refresh your memory. But this thread file should be the trick here. And we did end up getting a brand new aftermarket nut, but after we file the threads on the pinion, we're gonna try to put the original nut back on, which is what we really need because if we can get the original nut, the thread back on, then we can actually be very confident that we put it back on right where it was. That way we know everything is going to be honky-dory. I'm gonna put a link to this thread file in the video description too, if it's, if it's any good, if I can recommend it. Let's get under the car and see how well this file files and if we can save this rear end from sheer disaster. Do you ever just randomly find yourself thinking about Susan B. Anthony quarters? Or were those dollars? Were the Susan B's 1976? Well, 1976 was the bicentennial quarter. So if the Susan B's were 76, yeah, they would have been, they were dollars, right? So I'm gonna pull this off. Oh. 
Okie dokie, you see on the end here, there's this smashed in looking area here. There's one over here. Somebody before us must have hammered that down or put a punch on there and hammered it to make sure that the nut couldn't come off. And it's kind of to gack the thread up right on the very end. And that's what's keeping us. We need this very end to look like these down here because otherwise the nut's not going to go on. Here's the aftermarket nut. See, it doesn't want to get started. I started to stand up to go look for our original nut and it was in my pocket. See, same song and dance. We'll let those sit right there while we work on this so that we can easily retrieve them and test, test, file, test, file, test, file. So what we got to do is try all these different sizes. There's eight sizes total for on each size. And we need to find the size that matches up. That matches up right there. It's 16, isn't it? Yep, that's 16. Here's what I'm saying. Nope. Nope. No, not that one. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, this porridge is just right. And I guarantee you none of these aren't gonna fit because we already found it, 16 man. But no sigh of relief yet because we could still completely ruin this. So <laughs> we gotta push, that's cutting. That's cutting. That would not be cutting. So we're just gonna go like this and try to clean that up. We'll try both nuts. I think it's a little better already. Eh, yeah, close. Alright, how's that? It looks better, but is it better? Mm. Well, it's not going on yet. I'm getting a little... Getting a little concerned. It's this spot right here. Ah, filed my hand. Don't worry, threads. I'm not gonna hurt you. I just wanna file you. Oh, for heaven's sake. You know, I've never met a thread I couldn't file. But today might be the day. It's kind of whichever nut wants to go on. We'll take it. Mother Teresa! <sighs> no luck yet. This is not... It's not looking good. If we can't fix these threads, we're gonna have to... to we're gonna have to pull this out and basically replace everything in it. I'm gonna keep trying here. I've been under here for a solid hour and I just cannot get this to work right. And it's gotten to the point where it's no fun anymore. I have to keep chalking each axle so that they don't turn so that I can try to tighten the nut on and be able to back it off and 
test it and everything and I can't feel my legs <laughs> beneath my uh, knees. I just have this nut threaded on almost all the way, forcing it, I guess you could say, sort of, kind of, not really. And there's a little bit of metal shavings in here, a little bit. And I see here that the little tiny metal shavings that are coming off this nut, just very teeny tiny little bit, I can see it's right here. So that leads me to believe that this has to be the spot that's jamming us up. It's gotta be. And you know what? I'm about to get buck wild on this. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know I don't know what else to do at this point. I I think this first thread right here is sticking out because of when somebody hammered this down. But the only other thing that I can think of doing is ordering basically a thread file like this, but one that can go that can go over this kind of like kind of like that. But who knows if that would do the trick. So I'm just filing this prominent thread down and then I'm going to clean it up with the file, with the thread file. This might be a big mistake. I'm not sure, but there's not much else to do. a little better. Oh, that's better. It's a little bit better. Let's try the other nut. That's a little bit better too. I'm really hoping to use this one though, the original nut. See, it, it's still, it's still just, it, it's, as if it's it's catching somewhere. Oh, what did I set this in up? Some dirt. Yeah. We might be getting it. At this point, I'm open for suggestions. I'm all ears. Here's another spot on this first thread that's a little prominent. You see, I have to keep doing this on both sides. So, for example, I'm going to try to tighten it. So that means that we need, we need to jam each side. Okay, now four times out of five, it all falls apart on both sides. And when you go the other direction, you gotta block it. Block it from the other direction too. So if we were, so if we go to take the nut off, we'd have to put this hammer over here. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. If I had wheels and tires. This is the best it's been so far. Without, well, without it getting tight like that because I don't want to, oh, I just, I don't want to be stripping the nut. I have no clue what in the world it is catching on. I mean, what do you think, Kevin? What in the world? See, right, right there, I can feel that. What is that? 
What are you? See, I can't tell. Is it here, 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 here? We're just getting crushed here. What's going on in this video? It's like we're in La La Land. I feel like we're just the teeny tiniest little bit from success on this nut. But at the same time, I have equal feelings that we're doomed. You know, sometimes I feel like it's a sin when I feel like I'm winning, but I'm losing again. <laughs> no, I'm gonna win. I know you're freaking out right now, but take it easy, your ulcer. Why do I keep closing my eyes? Just trust me on this, okay? It's fine. We have Whiskey Delta. Now, this is going to be just very, 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 very gentle, okay? You're about as gentle as you can get w with a pneumatic impact, okay? See, look at that. that we've, we've never had it that good. The yoke isn't on, so don't worry. If the if the yoke was on, then yeah, I might just be impacting it down and stripping every stripping the nut to smithereens, and then just say, "Well, I put plenty of Loctite in there; should be fine." Well, you can't see anything from there. There we go. Yes, watch from over there. I'm not trying to be a bonehead. I'm serious about this. This is just, just very, as light as I can do this. Just to, just to see what happens. Yeah, see? I don't know if I, I don't know, cause I, I just feel like there's just this little, just peace, we just gotta just break past and then everything's gonna be fine if it doesn't strip out. And everything will be safe and secure and our drive shaft won't fall out and our ring and pinion won't grenade itself. If we end up having to put a ring and pinion in this, we're just gonna call up one of those aftermarket companies and say, give us the best. Yeah, right. It'd probably be twenty thousand dollars. Gosh, I don't I don't understand this. Let's take it off and Let's see what it looks like. Well, I don't see any metal shavings. See, that? that's why I tried that, because I was pretty confident it wasn't going to destroy the nut. But, see, it, it's the same thing. Yeah, well, it goes a little bit further. Well, well, well. <sighs> yep, yep, yep. We're gonna have to accept temporary defeat. I'm trying to get this project whipping and cracking and pushing it into the next phase. We gotta get through this what a bummer, but that's all right because the car is going to be completely worth it when we're driving it and we're going to get a new exhaust system for the blast cabinet, knock that stuff out, finish it, and we're going to decide what we're going to do in one shot to take care of that rear end there. No more playing around on it. I think a windmill is about to get tilted. 
Just think if we push through this before you know it, the wheels and tires will be on and we'll be doing the floor in this car and that proper steering wheel will go on and we'll wipe the dust off our pinstripe dash. We'll be putting the tail lights in and playing with the ch Uh, it'd be cooler if that would have come off faster. I think you'll like watching this video next. Thanks for subscribing, clicking the bell, sharing, all that stuff. Thumbs up. Ow! Yo!